now. And next, I would like to introduce you to another wonderful and very popular program, and it's called the Balak or Language and Culture Program. And it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Dr. Kunaya Vimuktanon, Balak Director, and Kun Warisara Pimprapod, our first year student, to talk about this Balak program. Please take it over. Swadikap. Swadikap. Hello, everybody. Um, Thank you very much for the um, Office of International Affairs of Jalalongkorn University for organizing this um, event for us and a chance for me to talk to you guys everywhere on the internet um, about this. So um, let's get go. Let me start first by giving a little bit of presentation on what exactly our program is. So we are the Balak Program, the Bachelor of Arts in Language and Culture. But what is it exactly? Well, we are Jolongkorn University's flagship global liberal arts program, and we are Thailand's first cultural studies program. Um, we have several academic focuses. Um, the main focus of all of our students is cultural studies. We'll go into what that is a little bit later. But we also offer concentrations in um, media cultures, that is, cultures to do with um, the creation of media, the impact that media has on people, things like, um, you know, what impact has street, does streaming have on people's perception of film, for example? No, now that um, they can just sort of um, pause a movie, go to the toilet, come back, and pause it, rather than having to watch it all the way through in the cinema, or watch it all the way through when it's airing on you know, HBO. If any of you watching are old enough to remember f watching these things on True Visions or IBC. Um, but we also offer um, global cultures as a concentration. Global cultures is about um, studying our current fast-changing world, about the impact that globalization has on the world itself. Like for for example, looking into how looking into um, how um, uh, sorry looking into how things like globalization has changed our world. Questions of um, how exactly has the this globalized business have had an impact on our society? You know things like like this thing here, like my little iPhone. It's an iPhone. We all know it's made by Apple, an American company, but all the parts come from all over the world. Like Google, Google it right now. Don't turn away from the stream, open another tab or on a different device and Google where, I've, where all the bits in iPhone comes from, where it's made. And you'll see it's from all over the world. And not just these things, but big complex things like the Boeing 787 or even the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning fighter. All these things require cooperation from people around the world to make possible. And what impact does that have on culture? Does, it, does globalized culture mean Americanization, with the Americans coming in to you know, take over our culture? Well, simple answer, not really. But for the long answer, well, you'll have to join the program. Aside from this, we also offer foreign languages. Now, this will offer you a chance to learn a foreign, la foreign language um, throughout your uh, four years with us, but this, this will be sort of secondary to your cultural studies. So, what about practical stuff then? Well, when it comes to your practical skills, you'll, need, uh, you'll get critical thinking skills because in our programs, we don't really do that much um, memorization. There's still going to be things you need to know off my heart, you know, basic theory and such like, but for a lot of your courses, um, it's going to be about how you apply those ideas. Like, we don't really do right or wrong. There's no such thing as a right answer or wrong answer after a you know, certain factual point. There's only good answers and bad answers. And we'll teach you how to think critically to create good answers 
out of your own opinions. Also, we'll teach you creative problem-solving skills. Oh, like, and that it comes naturally from the critical thinking part, because you learn to think out of the box. Think how to, well, how do I apply this to this other situation that perhaps not that many people or no one you know of has applied it to before? And of course, communication skills and writing skills. Lots and lots and lots and lots of writing. That's what Balak is known for. We, do, uh, we don't really do multiple choice. Short answers, a little bit sometimes, but vast majority of your assessments will be in the written form. So you can bet that your writing skill will be through the roof by the time that you're done with us. And of course, preparing you for your future careers or overseas education. Like Balak program, or indeed any other of Jala's fine international program, will help, will give you a basis for you to you know, get ready for a more westernized style of education. But let's go back to our program. What exactly is cultural studies? Well, I can tell you what it isn't first. It isn't the study of many different cultures. You know, it's not a study of you know what the Japanese, what the Japanese people do, what the, um, the what do the Korean people do, what does the um, French people do. If you want to do that, well, look to look on the slide there. Oh, there we go. Look at the slide there. Like, I've just those are just some results from YouTube that I got. Um, within a few minutes, just looking up um, cultures of different places. All of these are from people who are from there telling you about themselves, about their culture. So that's why we don't teach that, because you can get that from the internet. So if it's not that, what is it then? It's the study of the concept of culture itself. So looking at how cultural practices relate to wider systems, like politics, the economy, social structure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So questions like, how does a particular piece of science fiction reflect a society's culture at the time? Like the original Star Trek, the one, you know, the one with Captain Kirk. Um, you may not be old enough, to, may not be young, sorry, may not be old enough to have seen it on TV, but you certainly have access to, have, no, they don't have it anymore, but you have had access to it for a bit on Netflix. But in, in that story, in the um, original Star Trek, it was made in the, you know, the 60s and that sort of era, it's very utopian. utopian. Like, it speaks of a wonderful future where uh, um, everybody um, have no need, there's no such thing as poverty, you know, all that stuff. What does it say about the kind of hopefulness that was in that society at that time? Or questions like, how does the use of social media impact people's political engagement? Um, how does people perceive um, politicians on um, social media? Has anything changed now that um, people can instantly reply to politicians on social media? Or what about how does the global economy, what impact does the global economy have on cultures around the world? These are the sort of questions that we will try to get you to be able to answer in our program. But then, what is culture exactly? Well, again, I'll start by telling you what it's not. It's not any one specific thing. You know, it's not ballet, it's not concert, it's not Chris, just Christmas, it's not just any of these things. It's not just you know the um, the big ticket items that people link with one place's culture or another. Culture is everything. It includes the food that you eat with your friends, how that food is shared, when do you share your food with your friends, what time of year, or indeed do you just go all the time. But when you do, um, what is the meaning of the sharedness of food? Or how you use your phone, for example. Like, what does it mean when you text someone and they leave you on red? What does that mean? Or does it mean if you text someone, then those three little dots that indicate someone's typing something pops up, disappears, and they never say anything again. 
how does those things come to mean the kind of things that we've taken them to mean today? Or culture is also the way we play, no matter if you are rolling dice, throwing ball, or pwning noobs on um, computer games. The way that we play, the meaning that we give to our play, also have cultural connotation. Particularly, like those of you guys who play, those people who play online games, you can probably tell that um, there are certain culturally specific way that some people chat online. So, what I'm trying to say here is that culture is a part of everyday life. So, the awkward question now. What can you do with this degree? Like, what exactly can you do with a Bachelor of Arts in Language and Culture? Well, that's easy. Lots. Cultural studies can lead to many fields of work and postgraduate studies. We have our, our students um, who have graduated on our program have gone on to a lot of work, and a lot, a lot of people have gotten into many different various postgraduate programs in law, medicine even, um, business, marketing, human resource management, or they even gone on, of course, to do cultural studies and um, or literature type degrees. Like in marketing, the Stanford School of Business have highlighted the importance of culture in marketing, that culture-based differences show up when information is processed in a cursory or spontaneous manner. This means that in order to create a piece of marketing for a place, you need to know the culture of that place. You need to know how people might translate that thing. Or in diplomacy, like the ability to understand why people do certain things, or at least the ability to figure out an understanding to why people do certain things can have a massive impact on you. Particularly, some things may lead to some, you know, miscommunication can lead to misunderstanding, distrust, and in a lot of cases, knowing how to communicate with people at, in a way that they would understand matters. And of course, in business consultancy, like McKinsey, one of the largest consultancy firms, have released um, a report on culture and why it matters. Because uh, the thing that separates high-performing businesses from the rest is culture. That is, understanding the culture of the people in their company and understanding the culture of their customers. So, now that I have your attention, and you maybe you're thinking about, you're interested in our program, what does it take? Well, round one usually opens around um, December. Um, check our website. And it's our, it, we require your English proficiency scores and an aptitude test, you know, aside from your high school stuff. The details are on our website. But the, those are the scores. Yes, they are a bit high, but considering how much the sheer amount of essay writing that we do, we need to set a bit of a high standard. In this first round, though, you won't have to do any writing. As long as you meet the minimum requirements, you're going to be interviewed, and everything will come down to the interview. Some people like that. Some people think that's terrifying. But, you know, that's the way we, we find that it works. Round two, however, the scores are a little bit lower. But round two comes with an essay task. Not an exam, you don't have to come into an exam, but we will send out an, a list of essay questions to our applicants, and that we will be marking that, that exam alongside your interview. Now, for those of you who are worried that somebody might um, you know, cheat and get someone else to write, the exam, write their essay, don't worry, because we'll be grilling everyone on their essay and it's super obvious when somebody didn't understand what they wrote. This is your, what you can expect to do during your time at Balak. The vast chunk of your education will be within your, um, your cultural studies credits and your concentration credits. 
So concentrations are the media culture, global culture, or language, as I've mentioned before. But with language culture, sorry, with language concentration, we, do, we only open those, we only open particular language if there's enough demand for it. In addition to this, we also operate a double degree program with um, Waseda University through their School of International Liberal Studies. Our, our, pro, our double degree program with SILS at Waseda University involves four semesters right here at Chulalongkorn University, and then four more semesters over at Waseda University in Tokyo, Japan. Now, the criteria for applying is that you only can only apply when you're in second year, first semester, so the first semester of your second year, but you don't need to, have to know any Japanese language to apply. We'll be, now, Waseda will be expecting you to learn some Japanese when you're over there, you know, just so you can survive two years there. Uh, but you must also be working towards either global or media concentration in Balak. And at the moment, we are looking to accept around five students per year. Um, at least that is our current agreement with Waseda University. Now, what, one thing that I love about coming back out of the pandemic and that we're back in person now is that we get to do class trips again. And that a lot of programs, a lot of classes, have these additional events for their um, students in order, to, in order to show them certain bits of um, you know, culture of the language they're studying or go and have hands-on experience about the things that they're talking about in class. In addition to these class trips, if you want to go really far away, well, we have exchanges and summer programs also, um, mostly exchanges. Now, with our exchanges, you can, aside from the massive offerings that is done through the university, through the OIA, we also have our own, like the, the Faculty of Arts also have our own um, selection of programs that, sorry, a section of universities that you can go on exchange with that have an agreement with the faculty directly. But the, the possibilities are massive. I can't even list all the universities um, off the top of my head. There, there's one in almost every um, continent. And I'm saying almost because I'm pretty sure we don't have a partner university in Antarctica, owing to the fact that there are no universities that I know of in Antarctica. And, of course, if you prefer to stay here, it doesn't mean you're going to miss out. We have lots of academic and cultural events at the university also, from talks um, by um, distinguished authors from overseas to you know, showing of films and workshops like this, this digital branding workshop that you know, I've shown you on screen there. A lot of cases we work with foreign embassies and you know, they help to bring um, filmmakers and authors from their home countries. So, that's it. Um, this, we're not, don't turn off yet, we're not done yet. Um, stay on stream, stay on stream. Um, so, if you want more information, go to our website, again, on a different device or on a different tab, stay on stream. Um, but anyway, you've heard me talk enough. So let's talk, but you think, oh, he's just an Ajahn, of course he's gonna talk up his program. Well, how about talking with an actual real life student? So I have here with me, she's been here the whole time, sitting here patiently, is the head of, or the representative of our first year. Hi everybody, I am Pat, and as Ajahn have uh, already uh, introduced me, I'm the first year representative of uh, Balak, and for, uh, well, first of all, I have to say, wow, it was interesting. We got to know what Balak is all about, and up to the requirement each student needs in order to uh, get accepted to the programs. 
Well, but I'm sure that there are still some uh, concerns and questions uh, regarding to our program. Um, I feel like we should uh, cover more with the uh, um, overall uh, part of the admission process. Mm -hmm. um, if there is any tips on how can each student increase their chances of getting accepted to the program mm -hmm. from your you know, point of view of Ajahn? Yep, from, from my experience. Um, in order to get accepted into the pro program, you want to increase your chances? Well, read the instructions. And s make sure you submit all the required documents, like the minimum scores are the absolute minimum score. We unfortunately cannot um, you know, consider any application whose scores falls below that minimum. And aside from that, uh, what we... Aside from that, um, once you've submitted your application and go through, then for the, our first round, there'll be our, um, sorry, our interviews. Um, but yeah, Pat, you had your interview not too long ago. What was it like? Well, it was intense. Wow, but it was okay. I mean, uh, you just have to uh, express your opinion and try your best to bring your potential out to, you know, so the interviewers see what why do you really want to get into the program? And I mean, if you think Balak is the program for you, just let you know. I mean, just let them know, and they know, and they will choose you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and just one very one very important thing. Um, just waiting for the Zoom camera. Coco, okay. <laughs> don't just uh, don't read a prepared statement because we want to get to know you not what you wrote down. And, but at the same time, make sure that you know your SOP and that what you put down in your SOP, that's actually you. Because if you say that you're into this or that, you can bet that we're gonna ask you and check if, the, if you're really into this or that or not. So and it doesn't matter if that thing is um, something you might think is silly, like computer games. Well, so what? I, I game. Like, but if you say you're into computer games, then, well, you need to be able to show that you're in, into it more than a surface level. You know, can expect questions like, um, you know, how, how do you think um, game... How do you think gameplay mechanics um, impact a player's um, experience of the story? Could, do you think we can analyze um, games in the same way as we do films and novels? Or, th or just things like, is there any story, any difference from the um, player's viewpoint, story-wise, from a linear game, like let's say Doom Eternal, or an open world game, like let's say um, Horizon Zero Dawn? Um, but yeah, um, if I missed out anything, Pat? Sorry? Did I miss out anything? Um, well, you pretty much cover everything. Yeah. But um, let's move on to the scoring part. So I know a lot of people wonder, does high score matter? Does uh, the higher score they get, the higher chance they would get in? Does it matter at all? Right. If, if you're talking about um, things like IELTS and yes. SAT scores, then let me be very clear because this is a very important thing. No, it doesn't matter. As long as you meet the minimum requirement, then we'll interview everyone, and everyone who gets interviewed will have equal chances. Because we needed those scores to make sure that there is some sort of a, um, you know, a standard minimum that everybody can meet. But at the same time, um, we also need to you know, talk to you. Like the, the main point of the interview is so that we get to know you, that know that you would be happy with us in our program because there's nothing worse than you know, making a mistake on a, um, an undergrad program and wasting maybe a semester or a year. So you need to make sure that we're right for you and we need to make sure that we're right for you. So, but yeah, don't worry too much about um, scores. All right, so we uh, have pretty much covered a lot about you know uh, interviewing part and scoring part, but there's one thing about interview part. 
which that uh, both of the rounds are going to be a little bit different. Well, uh, straight and directly from my per, uh, perspective and my experience, I got into the first round of the interview, which was a little bit more special because I have to went through the box, which is um, <laughs> I will be given uh, three words randomly, but I had to choose two out of the three words I was given. Um, and then I had to proceed and talk about those two topic as a single combined uh, topic for about three minutes uh, with another minute for the preparation. Um, it was fun if it wasn't under that much of the stress. But uh, so I would just give you the tips on that. Uh, just, uh, you know, don't be stressed about it too much. Uh, put out some keywords you want to mention while you talk and uh, make out live very clear so you know what are you talking about and what lasting believe in what are you actually talking about because I have to say you're gonna get in trouble if you don't know what are you saying and you don't really believe in uh, you know that idea you are trying to express because there are definitely going to be follow-up questions from Ajans and yeah also in general, uh, don't be afraid to you know share your opinion. There's no ch such right or wrong answer at all. Just express your uh, potential or what do you believe in. Yeah, like adding on a little bit for the box, um, because like you mentioned, you know the box, but and we do pick, pick up you know p p um, pick out three topics on a box and choose two. But the thing that I find that people tend to uh, like fall flat on a little bit is not combining the topics together and just talk about like, you know, try to have like too many speeches of two different things. And I think that can hurt people's chances a lot because, well, you didn't understand the assignment and if you can't understand this little assignment, well, are you gonna, make, are you gonna be okay at Balak? Yeah. All right. So yeah. So those are the tips that we both recommend you to, you know, kind of follow. Um, also, I know that there's a lot of requirement from other faculty about portfolio. Um, a lot of them require one. Maybe uh, a lot of pages with, uh, you know, with the following contents that they specific want. But what about Balak? Do we require one? No. Ah, we, we don't do not. require one. Nope. Um, some people already have their portfolio from other programs. So they, you, if you do have one already, you're welcome to bring it in, but we're not going to ask for it. And you can use it as like a physical PowerPoint slide for when you are introducing yourself. Like, but it's not something that we ask for because, you know, why do we need a portfolio? We have you. You're right there. So we want to know something about you. We'll talk to you. Exactly, and we also have the SOP. Mm -hmm. um, for me, uh, during the interview period, I... Uh, I did not have a portfolio actually, but because I was positive that I have included everything in my SOP, I have shown and I have written what I wanted, like why I wanted to join Balak, uh, my passions, you know, my purpose and everything. And that's it. That's just put it in SOP and they will ha uh, and they will read it out and they would see what do you have in yourself. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, so we are much, uh, pretty much covered everything about the, you know, uh, you know uh, the admission process. Oh, hang on, just one more thing. Okay. Um, I just remembered this. Um, this happened, um, you know, this rarely ever happens, but it happened. So I need to make something clear. We ask for, um, you know, rub song, new, or two inch picture, but in Thai, it can also be translated to two finger pictures. So when we ask for that, we mean a photo that's um, uh, within the scale of a two-inch photo, not this. <laughs> like, the crew here is laughing a bit, but honestly, that happened before. So just, you know, a little bit, just a little bit of info. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, just uh, keep in mind, not this, Rub Song new. Okay, um, so now I think everyone wants to know more about the experiences and the uh, environment in the Balak itself. Uh, maybe let's hear from Ajahn first. Uh, what is your perspective or your view on the uh, Balak after COVID? Um, I remember like coming back on campus um, after the whole, after you know, we we're allowed to come back to teach on campus again. And like there's, 
there's no, no, there's no feeling like a full campus. And just see everybody walking around, all these students sitting around together underneath um, one of our buildings uh, doing their um, assignments together, or people walking around the library, and just, or just you know, sitting having lunch in the cafeteria. It's, very, it's a very, um, it's a special thing. I don't know how to explain it. And, but I think from the perspective of all the Ajans, like the vast majority of the Ajans I know, we're all glad to be back on campus and to finally be face to face with our students because we're really tired of cosplaying a, you know, a Twitch streamer for this past um, two years. And we just, we're just excited to getting back to what we do best, just teaching with you face to face and not face to camera like now. All right, um, so we have heard from John himself uh, about the, his perspective. All right, let's hear from me as a Balak student. I've been in Balak for almost a semester now, and I have to say that I have had a really great uh, experiences toward Balak um, in uh, both of the you know class management and also the activities. So for the class management, uh, it's been really good because um, we get to see our friends, we get to see our professor in face. Um, so we uh, we were kind of encouraged more in discussion and we can exchange our idea or what we believe or what we thought, you know, because that's all, like, that's what Balak is all about. So yeah, that was great. Uh, also the activity part. Um, I have uh, experienced a few uh, activities already, but one of the most memorable activity that I have been in was the Balak trip. It was hosted by Balak 14. It was amazing. I have to say it was amazing. I got to be a part of the Balak trip and it really helped me to familiarize with uh, new friends in faculty, uh, with Ajahn, a professor who was there, and even with the alumni who uh, has the whole experience about Balak before and they even graduated from uh, here. Um, throughout the events or activities during the Balak trip, there was um, outdoor games, there were mystery night, we got to solve our own crime, there were alumni talk as I mentioned. Um, so it was a really great session because we got to uh, exchange our you know, thought and idea and maybe if there's still concern uh, toward Balak once you already got in, the the, the, the alumni is over there, uh, they can talk to you and they can share with you how are their future going and which way or direction you want to go. So yeah, I would say uh, it has been a really great experience and environment. Um, but here and again, I have got one last question for you, Ajahn. Um, I feel like this question is a question that a lot of people or almost everybody who is considering applying for Balak wants to know, which is, is the program difficult? Well. Again, this is an yet another very important question. Yes, very difficult. We will make you cry. <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously though, um, it is challenging, but it's gonna be challenging. Like, it's not gonna be easy. But, you know, do you want <coughs> easy? Like, to, to take another computer game um, type uh, metaphor, like when you're playing games, and you just go after those, you know, tiny little first level monsters. You're, it, they're easy to take care of, but they're easy to you know, get rid of, but you're not gonna get that many experience points out of them. You want to go after the big bads, right? Get all the cool, rare, ultra rare type items. Get all the whole bunch of experience points from those. And that's what ballot courses are, you know? There are a lot of big bads for you to slay to prove to us that you can hack it, you can make it. Oh, and I'm watching, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I got a question here that from the, um, from the text. Oh, and I can't read it on my watch, so I'm gonna need to look at it on sure. my phone. Sure, or I could, I could help you too. Yeah, let me help you. So there's a question from mm -hmm. our audience, and this is a question from the non-Thai applicant. He say that, well, we're talking about the interview, is it an is it an in person interview or can it be an online interview? So, uh, in other words, do they have to make a trip to do the interview with ah, you? Great question. Um, for 
for applicants who are based in Thailand or in, for applicants in the, um, the Thai rounds, the interviews will be in person. But for the international rounds, those interviews will be done online because we understand that not all of you are based here in Thailand and you know, we don't really expect you to fly all the way over here just for a university interview. That would be silly. Yes. So, of us, not of you. You're not silly. Yeah. Still apply. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wonderful. So let me ask Kun Pat, would you say that you really enjoy this wonderful experience? So tell me more about you know, your class and your courses that you've been studying for the first semester. Well, uh, my experience has been very good, as I mentioned. Um, yes. I have taken a lot of uh, requirement. I mean, the compulsory uh, courses so far. Um, well, I have the feeling and the vibe of the, you know, it's challenging, but in a good way, um, because a lot of people would expect, also including me at first, I expect that it to be really hard something that's, you know, that you were going to die doing it. But <laughs> it's actually turns out much better than what I thought. Because oh, most of the courses, um, there are a lot of uh, introduction courses, there are uh, fundamental courses, which those kind of courses really help you in adjusting yourself to the university life and to the college, which is going to uh, totally be different uh, from your, you know, high school life. So, yeah, pretty much it's not gonna be uh, too hard, you know, I, I believe that everyone can do it, only you have to have the interest and in, on what Balak is. Right, so well, talk, talk a little bit about your classmate, how about that? Your Ooh. friendship that's <laughs> kind of, you know, like in the class. That's, that's really interesting. Uh, well, I have made a lot of friends already uh, throughout the semester. One thing I really like about Balak is that it's, uh, it's a place with uh, the diversity of people. There are many kind of people, um, not just like people from different high school, but also people from uh, different backgrounds, people mm -hmm. from uh, different <coughs> countries as well. Because uh, in our program, we also uh, accept international students as well as the exchange students, mm -hmm. uh, which really allow us to, you know, get to exchange uh, idea, thought, and culture with them. So I really like the diversity that we have in Balak. You know, it kind of add up uh, the, you know, the dynamic here. So, and overall, pretty much everybody is nice and, you know, welcoming. So I, I definitely have to say that Balak is, has a really welcoming, you know, uh, kind of society. So. Very good, yes. And I do have one more question from our audience here. They say that w during the interview process, do we need to really read all the news and prepare what's going on in the world in order to pass this interview process? Well, again, that is a very good and important question. And the answer is, you don't need to know every single thing that is going on in every single country in the entire world, <laughs> but you do need to know something. Like, just the things that you are interested in. Like, for example, if you ha are particularly interested in um, what's going on in Myanmar, then you can focus on that. If you're interested in what's going on in, um, uh, in Ukraine, then you can do that also. Mm -hmm. But basically, we don't expect, we, more, we are looking more for a depth of understanding rather than like a wide breadth of knowledge. So you know, don't worry, you don't have to read all of the BBC or CNN or um, you know, all other countries' stuff. Okay, yeah. well, thank you very much. Now, I have another question from the audience as well. They say, do we have to write an SOP before or after application? Before. The SOP comes in with your application. Right, so. okay. And um, if you can maybe make a, um, like define who would be suitable for this Balak program, please? Both Ajahn and also Kun Pat. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the, key, uh, the key thing is curiosity. Oh, like very good. Somebody who's um, willing to question, not just others, but question themselves, question their own beliefs, right. question like whether or not the things that they've known all their lives is true or not. I'm, I'm trying not to sound like Morpheus here. <laughs> um, but that's generally like people who have curiosity, people who are willing to put in the hard work. And Pat, what, do you, what else do you think? Um, I think I'm 
going in the same direction as you are, uh, I think a person who has a broadened perspective is really uh, suitable for ballet because um, once you're here, you have to be the person who really keen to know uh, how things are and you know, you want to find a reason why everything is the way they are. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that should be uh, one of the qualities you should have to be here. Right, well, thank you very much. And I think that will be the end of our presentation. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Kunaya Vimuktanon, Balak Director, and Kun Pat Orisara Pimpapot, our first year student, for sharing us some wonderful experience and information about Balak program. Thank you. Kakun Krab. Kakun Krab. Kakun Krab.